Well, hi there. I'm here today with a few different snakes, snakes that I love very much. This is Sarlacc, my sand boa, flower, my piebald ball python, and buttercup, my gopher snake. And these three snakes, despite all being snakes, they're very, very different from one another. I love them all for, for different reasons, but they do have, being snakes, a few things in common. And one of those commonalities between them is what they eat. These snakes, and actually most pet snakes that you would get, are going to be rodent feeders. So in captivity at least, you're going to be feeding them some sort of mice or rats for the most part. And I want to talk to you about the different kinds of rodent feeders that are available. Not really so much about the difference between mice and rats because effectively the main difference between those two is just size. There are other differences, of course, but as far as feeders go, rats, generally speaking, are just larger than mice, and so larger snakes are going to eat rats, and smaller snakes are going to eat mice. And that's all well and good. But those of you who maybe already have a snake, or who've investigated snakes quite a bit already, know that there are some different sorts of rats and mice available, different kinds of rodent feeders, such as frozen rodents or live rodents, and I want to talk briefly about the difference between frozen thawed and live rodents and why you might use each. And last of all, I want to talk to you about how to prepare a frozen rodent so that a snake like one of these might be willing to accept it. So let's start off talking about the difference between frozen thawed and live. And the difference, obviously, is that live rodents are alive. And being alive gives them some pros and some cons. One of the cons is, this is a live animal, and, and it's cute, and it is sad to watch nature take its course when the snake decides to feed on it. Another big con is the fact that if you're not careful, because a live rodent is actually a pretty dangerous little animal, they could end up harming your snake. They could even kill your snake. So one warning I have to give you, I want to be extremely clear about this, is that if you are using live rodents never, ever, ever, even for a short period of time, leave the snake and the rodent together unattended. Because the rodent can prey on the snake just as much as the snake can prey on the rodent. And if you intend to have your snake live for a long time, you do not want to be leaving it alone with a rodent. Do not do that ever. So I hope, I hope I've made that clear. But some other issues is they can potentially carry diseases because they're alive and they haven't been frozen. It's not an issue I've ever actually encountered, but you do want to be careful about what the source is of your rodents. The other thing is just that you have to keep them alive, right? You have to bring them home alive, you got to maybe store them alive, and you can't store a lot of them for a long time unless you've got a really big rodent care facility, and that's not for most people. So for most people, the easier and safer alternative are going to be to use frozen thawed feeders which I love. I love the fact, and not everyone would love this, but this might be a, a deal breaker for some people getting snakes, but you can just keep a whole lot of them in your freezer and they don't take any maintenance or care. They just are there ready to go when you need them. You can also order them in in bulk, which will save you a lot of money. And they're much safer to feed to your snake for all the reasons that we listed before. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I very much prefer frozen thawed rodents, but I do have a few snakes that just do not respond to a frozen thawed rodent. They're, they will only take live rodents from me, so I have a few that I still need to feed live rodents to. But, generally speaking, almost all of my snakes, all three of these, and most of the snakes that I have, feed just great on frozen thawed rodents. So I'm going to put these guys away, and I'm going to talk you through how to prepare a frozen thawed rodent. This means we are going to have some dead rodents. And so if that's something that's going to bother you, snakes might not be for you. And right here, we have got a video on five of the best pet lizards that don't eat rodents, or at least that don't need a rodent diet that you could possibly own. And also, five of the best pet turtles that you could possibly own. And not one of those is a rodent eater. So those might be the perfect pet for you. But if you're willing to deal with feeding rodents, Snakes are awesome. I'm going to go get the rodents. You sit tight. All right, I've got a few different rodent feeders right here. These are all 
Previously frozen, now thawed feeders. I'm going to talk to you a little bit right up front about how to thaw them out. And the best way to do this, if you know you're going to be feeding a little while in advance, is to take your rodent feeder while it's frozen, take it out of the freezer, because you're always going to want to keep them in the freezer. You don't want them to thaw out and then freeze them and thaw them out and freeze them. And you definitely don't want to leave them thawed for an extended period of time. But you're going to take your rodent feeder while it's frozen, you're going to put it in a bag like this, and you're going to put it in your refrigerator. And you'll just do that overnight. And it'll, it'll thaw out without growing bacteria on it. Excellent thing. And then, depending on the type of snake you're feeding, it might be ready to go. If it's ready to go, you can go ahead and get it out. I would recommend having some tongs. I would recommend some tongs longer than these. I actually use some about 10 inch hemostats. They are great tongs. The longer your tongs are, the farther your hand can be away from whatever it is you're feeding because you've got to trick them. Snakes usually don't eat dead animals, and so you've got to trick them into thinking this is a live feeder. And so what you'll do is you'll take it with your tongs and you'll grab it and you'll hold it in front of your snake and you'll wiggle it around and you'll play and you'll learn how to trick a snake into thinking this is a live animal. Sometimes it'll take a minute or two. Usually you don't want to poke them with it because that can cause them to back away and actually, because a rodent can be a dangerous animal, it can cause them to flee and then you're not going to get a feeding response. But you can wiggle it around. I recommend feeding in their enclosure. Some people like to take them out of the enclosure. That does nothing to help. It just increases the probability that your snake is not going to feed and increases stress on your snake before and after feeding. And after feeding is the time that you want to leave the snake alone as much as possible. There's no good reason to do this. They're not going to get cage aggressive or cage defensive because you're feeding them in there. It's very easy to let the snake know that you're not feeding it when you go to pick it up. But you'll wiggle it around and you'll learn how to do this. However, some snakes, like ball pythons for example, have heat sensitive pits on their face. And so they can tell from a distance that this rodent that you have thawed out even though it's, it's thawed because you never want to feed it to them with a bunch of ice still inside of it. That can cause real problems for your snake. But they can tell that this maybe looks like a rat and it smells like a rat and it wiggles around like a rat, but it's not the temperature of a rat and must not be a rat. And they'll lose interest in it. And so you need to get that rat up to like a normal body temperature or warm, very warm. And so what I usually do, I have a couple different ways. One way is that you can put them near a heat lamp and that works great, but it's maybe not the best way to do it because, well, for one thing, if you forget about them, don't, don't do that. So a better alternative is to put them in a Ziploc bag, try to get the best seal you can. I do have an issue with this method because I get water in it. Because what you're going to do is you're going to heat some water up and you're going to let your already thawed out rat or mouse, you're going to let it soak in the water for a couple of minutes just to warm it up. And then you can pull it out, grab it with your tongs, and wiggle away. If it gets wet, I've heard some people use a hair dryer to dry it out. And that actually seems like a great idea because that's warm also. That's only going to get it warmer. Seems like a, a great way to do it, if you ask me. I hate that they get wet sometimes. Maybe, maybe double bagging it would be a smart thing to do. But once it's warm and thawed, you wiggle it around and you play, I'm a rat. And ideally, your snakes will take it. I can tell you, most of my snakes will skip a meal every now and then. So it's wonderful if you've got a few different snakes. I usually don't thaw out nearly as many rodents as I have snakes at any given time. And I just feed them and I see which ones will take on a given day. And then I try again later that week to see if I can pick up the other snakes and let them feed. But I hope this has been helpful. I hope this helps you understand a few of the basics of feeding frozen thawed rodents and live rodents but especially frozen thawed rodents to your snakes. This isn't something that we enjoy, right? I take no joy from watching a, a rat or a, a mouse pass away or, or be eaten by a snake. But if you're going to keep snakes, this is part of the package. And like we said before, if this is something you're not willing to do, snakes might not be for you and that's okay. 
As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Is that blood? Yeah. So the deal with being frozen is it creates ice crystals. And ice crystals sometimes tear up some things, and so a lot of times they've got a bloody nose.